What you're looking at here is Volkswagen's latest niche-busting coupe crossover thing, the Tygo. It joins a huge range of VW SUVs on sale in the UK, all of which we will now attempt to list, at the time of writing, no doubt there will be a new one by the time you read this. So, deep breath. VW currently sells the T-Cross, T-Rock, T-Rock Cabriolet, Tiguan, Tiguan Allspace, Tuareg, ID.4 and now the ID.5. Good grief. The Tygo is based on the MQB A0 platform that also underpins both the Polo and the T-Cross. It's not technically an all-new car either, because it shares a great deal with the Volkswagen Niva sold in South America. To become a Tygo it gets a couple of styling tweaks inside and out as well as a new R-Line trim level. When it was initially unveiled, the general consensus was that the Tygo would become the new entry-level VW SUV on our shores. However, Volkswagen knows that the coupe body style means it can charge extra for a little bit more style. Now that it's available to order in the UK, it'll set you back roughly £1,000 more than the equivalent T-Cross and around £2,000 less than the larger T-Rock. We wouldn't usually list random dimensions in a review, but given the lightly confusing nature of the crossover market in the UK, an understatement if there ever was one, this should hopefully provide some context. The standard Polo hatch is 4,053mm long, 1,461mm tall and 1,751mm wide without including the wing mirrors. The Tygo is 4,266mm long, 1,494mm tall and 1,757mm wide. Remarkably similar, right? The Tygo does get a bigger boot, though, with 351 litres playing 438 litres. We reckon it looks rather good too. That full-width rear light bar is a neat little premium feature, and it's less polarizing than something like a Ford Puma. Some trim levels get chunky black plastic cladding all along the sills and silver roof rails for a bit more of a lifestyle look. The Tygo is petrol only, with the option of a 1.0-litre turbo 3-cylinder or a 1.5-litre turbo 4-cylinder. You can have manual or auto gearboxes, but front-wheel drive is standard and VW has already ruled out a GTI or R performance variant. Great question, and one which is still valid when chatting about the Tuareg almost two decades after it was first launched. Tygo is pronounced Tygo. There's nothing too surprising about the Tygo. It's not a surprise that Volkswagen has built it, customers can't stop buying coupified SUVs right now, and the driving experience will be familiar to anyone that's coming from a T-Cross or a Polo, although it's not on the same level as something like the Ford Puma. It'll be no surprise if it sells well though. It looks good and is well-priced, with drivetrains that wouldn't put anyone off but won't independently draw anyone in. There's also good space inside for four adults despite the chopped roof. A worthy little coupe crossover, if that's what floats your boat. If you've driven a T-Cross, you won't find too many differences behind the wheel of a Tygo. So far we've only tested the 1.0-litre three-cylinder in its more powerful 109 brake horsepower form, you can have it with just 94 brake horsepower too, and a 7-speed DSG gearbox. The little three-cylinder isn't the most refined of units, although VW expects it to be the best seller in this form when combined with a six-speed manual gearbox. The engine is clattery on startup and sounds a little strained at higher revs, so you'll be wanting to avoid the DSG Sport mode. It doesn't exactly provide too much propulsion either, with 0 to 62 miles per hour taking a whole 10.9 seconds. Specking the 109 brake horsepower 3-cylinder with a manual brings that time down to 10.4 seconds, whilst the 148 brake horsepower 1.5-litre turbo 4-pot manages the same sprint in a far more respectable 8.3 seconds despite only being available with the 7-speed DSG. The 94 brake horsepower 3-cylinder can only be had in base spec life trim and can only be combined with a 5-speed manual. That takes 11.1 seconds to get from 0 to 62 miles per hour, and top speed is just 114 miles per hour. Like the T-Cross, it's fairly impressive through the twisty stuff, staying level and composed. It helps that you're not actually too high up, of course. The suspension is on the firm side, but it never feels crashy and actually copes with potholes remarkably well. The brakes are as good as they need to be too with decent feel to the pedal. 
it's business as usual with regards to VW gearboxes. The DSG is a little slow to change down at times and can make moving off the line a little awkward. Flick it into manual mode though and the changes are super smooth. Worth noting that you get a manual handbrake in the Tygo too, useful for all those handbrake turns you'll be doing in your brand new coupe. Or not. Biggish wheels and that firm suspension mean that there is a fair bit of road noise in the Tygo. The steering is super light too, especially at low speeds. What else? Well, the presence of the MQB platform means you can spec VW's impressive travel assist cruise control system. That's great, but the rest of the active safety kit, lane keep assist, emergency braking etc, is far too intrusive. There's good and bad inside the Tygo, so let's start with what we like. The seats are soft, well trimmed and comfortable, you get proper buttons on your steering wheel, as opposed to awkward touch sensitive things, and no matter what trim level you go for, all examples get clear digital dials. Despite the chopped roofline the boot is still an impressive size too. The boxier T-Cross gets a 455-litre boot and the Tygo only loses 17 litres.